if you don't mind, I'm going to uh, use the microphone so that you all in the uh, back can hear me. I know that I've become a little bit of a fixture here on the Army staff over the last five years. <laughs> and uh, when I was leaving uh, FM about three or about two years ago, uh, many of you thought that I was going for good, and then I popped up again over in Damo AMD and uh, continued to serve. So it's a uh, it's interesting to see that so many people showed up today to make sure that I'm actually leaving. <laughs> As I thought about what I wanted to say uh, today, and thought about the last 25 years of uh, federal service, and thought about how I would shape that speech, I realized that I don't want to make a speech today. Uh, and, and many of you who have listened to me talk over the last five plus years, you don't want to listen to me give another speech again either. You, you've heard a lot from me, and, uh, and I've, I've enjoyed your camaraderie and uh, enjoyed a great time. But what I want to do today is uh, really just talk to you a little bit about some of the realizations that I made as I thought back through the last 31 years of, uh, of my service. Share some of those thoughts with you and then uh, say thanks to some people who are uh, really important to me, and, and that's really all of you. Um, the fir first and foremost, I realized as I thought back through 31 years that when I joined the Army, I enlisted into the Army, as General Formica had said, uh, for the scholarship for uh, college. I had no intention of making a career of it, and even as I graduated from college, I looked at uh, where, we, where the financial sector was at that point and decided, eh, maybe I'm going to pursue the adventure and uh, do one tour of the Army, spend some time on active duty, jump out of airplanes and have a good time, but that's it. Then I'm going to go pursue my business career. And uh, so that was, that was my mindset when I came on active duty. Fortunately, I had a very, very close friend in uh, David O'Neill. Dave uh, and a couple of friends of ours, um, Jose Chaplin and Buddy Reed, sat me down one, one afternoon on Saturday after we had finished playing some tennis, and they convinced me that I needed to go do a second tour before I made my mind up. So Dave, Dave talked me into it contacted the uh, branch manager up at HRC afterwards and said, Todd wants to go to uh, Germany for his next assignment. If you can do that for him, he'll, he'll stay. And uh, so I wouldn't be standing up here today, right now, retiring from the Army if it weren't for Dave and a couple of other close friends of mine. Uh, and Dave, I, I thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Well, sure. oh, I, I would tell you that uh, based on some of the things that we did as lieutenants, I'm surprised either of us made it to retirement. <laughs> So I, I continued throughout my career, and I really took it one step at a time and decided, okay, well, we'll see what the Army offers next, and if, if it sounds good and it sounds interesting, I'll stay one more tour. And, and it just proceeded throughout. And, you know, so here I am 31 years later, uh, having raised my right hand and enlisted in the National Guard, and, uh, I, and I'm retiring from the Army. And uh, that was, it was never my intent. But I'm absolutely thrilled that, uh, that I stuck with it. And, and that's really a testament to what the Army is, what the Army has become, the soldiers and the leaders that are out there and the families uh, and, and the pride that I take in serving the United States Army and being a part of it. And that, so without intending to, uh, I, I didn't want to walk away from it and I'm conflicted today in, in uh, making that transition out of uniform. And the Army, the other thing that I realized is, as I look back on it is the Army's tough. You know, there's some challenges uh, in being a soldier, in, in being in the Army, in, in serving your nation, in serving those soldiers, in serving the families. Uh, there's a lot of deployments. There's a lot of time away from families. Uh, there, there are a lot of challenges that exist out there, but those challenges and going through those challenges together are what really builds that camaraderie, makes us a close family, and uh, makes it so much fun to serve. Uh, one of the other realizations that I had was that uh, my family isn't going to be here today, my immediate family, uh, but I realized that my family is here today, and that's my Army family. And even those folks from a couple of the other services or the Missile Defense Agency, those people who are kind of distant cousins or in-laws, <laughs> <laughs> we still invite you into the fold and, and appreciate uh, the, the camaraderie that we share with you as well. But, you're the people that I shared my lives with. You're the people that I shared my life with, particularly over the last five years, of you uh, who are sitting out here today. But uh, it's an extended family, and it means a lot to me that you would be here today to, uh, uh, to be part of this, uh, this memorable moment for me. Uh, the last thing that I, I realized is that, uh, you know, even though the Army's hard, I couldn't have chosen a, a career that meant more to me that uh, had more value to me, that, uh, that really 
made me more proud to be a part of than to raise my right hand and be a soldier and, uh, and be a part of our army. And it, it has been a fantastic career. I can't believe where 31 years have gone. Uh, as I get ready to transition out to a different, uh, a different life, I will always look back very fondly on, the, on my career. I've got great memories. Uh, there are great people that I've served with. And, uh, and I have always been proud of being a soldier, as, as have my parents. Uh, my parents mean a lot to me as well. My first thanks goes to my mom and dad. Um, they really helped shape me and get me ready to be a soldier. They taught me discipline. They taught me the value of education and hard work. Uh, my dad particularly was the disciplinarian. My mom focused on education, and they both worked hard. But they taught me the values that, when I was a captain, became adopted as the Army values. And so for me, it wasn't anything new. I thought, well, this is, this is kind of the way we conduct our lives. And, uh, and so they, they really did a lot to shape me and get me ready to, uh, to be a soldier and, and uh, serve the career that, uh, that I served in. They, you know, so I, my first thanks goes out to them. Next, um, General Lennox, sir, thank you so much for all the mentorship that you've given me, uh, particularly over the last five years since I've arrived up here on the Army staff. But even as a young uh, major when I arrived out there at Fort Bliss, Texas, there were a couple of colonels that I came into contact with that, uh, that meant a lot to me and uh, gave me a lot of leadership and mentorship. Uh, and you and General Brom.